Hello, and welcome back to part two of this episode of the Children's History video podcast. We're going to learn lots about the past and how it shaped our lives today. Currently, we're learning about significant queens from history. Let's take a look at our two key questions. Number one, who were they? And then number two, should we remember them? Now, introducing our two Iron Age queens. Today, we're going to be focusing on this lady. Boudicca, I'm pretty sure some of you will have heard of her. And last week, we learned about Cartimandua. What were our findings? Let's take a look. Number one, she was a significant queen at the time. Important Roman historians called Ptolemy and Tacitus wrote about her. Remember the name Tacitus because you're going to hear more about him later. When the Romans came towards her kingdom, she realised that trying to fight them was not a viable option, so she successfully cooperated with them. And as a client kingdom, she was protected by the Romans when attacked, and handing over Caraticus earned her wealth. Caraticus was one of the Iron Age tribal chiefs who fought against the Romans. Let's travel back to the correct period in history. Here we go. Our timelines appeared. You can see AD in green, and BC in blue. We need our arrow to represent the fact that history goes far further back than this timeline shows. Starting with today. That's appeared. And as we go back in time, there is the First World War. We mark that on November the 11th each year as an act of remembrance. The Roman period has a longer duration. That's why it's represented by a longer rectangle. And then the Stone Age to Iron Age is even longer than I could ever show on my monitor. So just be aware it goes further back. There's our key. And inside that purple box is the period of time that we're interested in. The two images I showed you, that's when they were created. So they were created hundreds of years after the events actually took place. Okay. Let's take a look at Boudicca in a bit more depth. Here are our three key questions. Where did she reign over? What were the key points during her reign and how is she currently remembered? Let's take a look at the information we need to answer question number one. Her tribe, the Iceni. Now, if you look really closely at the map, you can see that I've left on the red part in the north of the country. That is the Brigantes territory. Take a second and compare them. Hopefully you notice that the Brigantes tribe covers a lot more land than the Iceni does. But let's get rid of that because we're focusing on Boudicca at the moment. Here we go. That's better. It did cover several modern counties. So Norfolk, Suffolk, Lincolnshire and Cambridgeshire. Not all of them, but some of them. And then a couple of key settlements. Apologies for the pronunciation. Eventa Iconorum, that's case to St Edmund, and then... Girolli Pond, that's modern-day Cambridge. I wonder if you live anywhere near either of those. Now, let's take a look at the key events during her reign. Here's a timeline. You'll notice the scale has changed. The one we looked at before was in 200-year chunks. Now this one is in two years. Here are our two arrows to remind us that events happened before this timeline and continue to happen afterwards. Can you spot any events that are the same on this timeline to the one I showed you for Carton and in the last episode? AD 43, the invasion of Britain by Emperor Claudius. AD 47, Prasuticus rebelled against the Romans when they threatened to disarm them. Now, Prasuticus was Carton husband and king of the tribe. When it says threatened to disarm them, that meant to take away their independence, and he was very keen to hold on to that. Around 60 AD, Prasuticus dies and leaves his kingdom jointly to the Roman Emperor and his two daughters. Now this broke with tradition, as normally it would be left to the Roman Emperor alone, but Prasuticus was keen to maintain that independence which he'd fought for in AD 47. Safe to say, the Romans didn't listen. They took the lands and beat Boudicca and her daughters. They were whipped by slaves. 
which, let's be honest, is an awful thing to happen to anyone. So what comes next is probably not a great deal of surprise when you've lost your kingdom and tr been treated so badly. AD 61. Boudicca leads a rebellion of Iceni, Trinovites and, the, and some others against the Romans. When we look at this in more depth, we need to remember that the Iron Age people themselves didn't write things down and the Roman accounts should be taken as rather one-sided, let's put it. Here we go. Number one. When the governor of Britain was leading a campaign in modern-day Wales, the rebellion began. Boudicca was joined by other tribes who did not like the Romans, including the Trinovantes. Their territory was directly south of the Iceni, and they had been badly treated, including making them pay for a large Roman temple in Cameldona. More about that in a minute. The first target was Camel Camelodonum, which was the fauna Trinovantian capital. Tacitus, a Roman historian, said, It was against the veterans that their hatred was most intense. That's referring to the Celtic people from that tribe. This is because they had taken over the Trinovantian lands and forced the people out. Think about it. How would you feel? I think we'd all be angry about it, wouldn't we? The city was destroyed and the people were killed. Brutally. The temple fell last after two days, and the statue of the emperor was beheaded. Suetonius, who was the governor of Britain at the time, rushed back to Londinium, which was an important commercial centre, and quite a new settlement at the time. It couldn't be protected, so Suetonius abandoned it. The people that didn't evacuate faced a similar fate to those in Colchester. That's the settlement we looked at before. An estimated number between 70 and 80,000 people died in those cities. We don't know where the final battle took place. Historians suggest it was somewhere along Watling Street, which is the Roman road, and in the West Midlands. The two armies faced against each other. The Britons outnumbered the Romans heavily. Roman sources claim that the Britons had up to 300,000 men against the Roman forces of around 10,000. I'm not sure I believe that, but we do know that there were a large number of British troops, far more than the Roman soldiers. The professional Roman soldiers won and Boudicca was defeated. What happened to her? The honest answer is, we don't know. She may have died in battle, she may have died of an illness afterwards, or she may have taken her own life. We do know that she lost. At the moment, how is she remembered? Let's think back to Cartimandua, because at the moment, very few people know about her. But I'm very confident more of you will have heard of Boudicca before we, left, we began this. Let's have a look how she has been remembered through history, because it does change. Gildas, a 6th century Saxon monk, described her as a treacherous lioness, butchered the governors, who had been left to give fuller voice and strength to the endeavours of Roman rule. I think it's quite safe to say he wasn't a fan. A treacherous lioness butchered the governors. So he seems to have a very much pro-Roman point of view. Tudor and Stuart period the 16th and 17th centuries into the 18th. A play was written called Bonduca and a poem called Bodicea, an ode. So she's been remembered. But her fame grew significantly in the Victorian period. Parallels, that means comparisons and similarities, were drawn between Queen Victoria and Boudicca. Several ships were named after her. And Alfred, Lord Tennyson, wrote a poem about her. There's also these two, this statue that you can still see in London today by Thomas Thornycroft of Boadicea and her daughters, which was designed and made in the late Victorian period 
and put on public display afterwards. So she's definitely being remembered. And in the Victorian period, that real growth in positivity began. What's our key information to remember then? Number one, her tribe initially tried to cooperate with the Romans, just as Cartimandua had. The king of the tribe, Prasutagus, broke with tradition and attempted to maintain his tribe's independence. It didn't work. She was joined by other tribes to rebel against the Romans, and they were initially successful at destroying significant settlements. That's Colchester and London. We don't know what happened to Boudicca after the battle that she lost. She has been remembered through history in different ways. Now, let's finish with a challenge. Now that you've learned about both of these queens, which of them do you believe made the correct decision? Cooperate or rebel against the Romans? You have two parts to do this. Number one, when you've made your decision, why is your choice the best? What advantages does it bring? And then number two, what are the disadvantages of the alternate choice? Have a go. Discuss it with your friends. I hope you've enjoyed listening to this quick series. Cartimandua is much less known about, but I think she's equally interesting to Boudicca, even though her life was very different. Hope you've all enjoyed it, and I will chat to you again soon. Bye.